Chapter 11, Embers Without thinking about it, my feet took me to the one place I had been avoiding. The pier where Sho and I were able to have a hap to where at last able to have a happy moment. I gripped the pier's railing, my knuckles white. Despite my reaffirming my decision, the fear still hasn't left me. There's too many emotions and so much tear. I can't handle it and start to hyperventilate. He said he'd stab me over and over. He said I couldn't die. Oh God, help me. The thoughts churn over and over in my mind, but I, as I watch the setting sun over the lake, a strange thing happens. I start thinking of show. I'd managed to repress all my thoughts up to this point, but now it feels as if I've lost control and everything is leaking out. I think of his smile, that adorable, pouty face, his overly emotive text messages, how he always tried his best to be cheerful, all the random touches I never knew when to expect, and how he worked so hard to better himself so he could help me. I sink down to my knees, quietly sobbing. I feel like my heart is broken. Show, you idiot, why did you have to push me out of the way? I'm supposed to be immortal, I would have been fine. I'm the one who's not even a real person. Your life means more to me than mine, don't say that, so don't say that. His words ring clear in my head and I clutch my chest as a sob rips forth. I lean into the railing like we did on that night, and the memory starts my crying anew. Flashes of Sho's death dance in my mind, intermixed with everything I loved about him. His last words keep repeating in my head. A sharp pain tears through me every time I wonder what it was that he didn't get a chance to say. It's like my mind is deliberately trying to torture me. The minutes pass by slowly as I cry out everything I'd been holding back. Watching the sun sink into the horizon, it feels like I'm saying goodbye to show. When night falls, my tears have all been cried out. I feel empty, like I'll never have any more tears again. As I sit there, listless, my mind drifts to a strange topic. I find myself thinking of my mother, and the only father I've ever known, Shizuka and Rokuru. When I think about it now, I do really think she loved him, the way they looked at each other. It was the sort of love that can't be faked. In my memories, the only time Shizuka always seemed like she was truly smiling was when she was with Rokuro. I don't think she realized it, but those were the only times I saw her emotions slip. Her love for Rokuro was so great, I simply couldn't hide it. Is this why you did what you did? So you didn't have to watch him grow old and die, being unable to join him in the afterlife? Is that, is that why you were sorry at the end? Because you felt like you had no other choice. You had to do something, anything, just so you could be with him fully. In that moment, I feel like for the first time I truly understand Shizuka, my mother. Right now there's nothing I wouldn't do just to be with Sho. There's nothing I wouldn't give to be able to bring him back. In this strange world where anything's possible, could I do that? Is death something anyone has conquered? If so, how do I do it? How do I bring him back? I sigh and wish that I had someone to ask, like Hikaru or even Shinji. Shinji seems to know a lot of things, maybe even obscure things, and we were they and they were best friends. If it's possible to create a life, why couldn't one be resurrected? Maybe Shinji would help me bring him back. If I survive this, whatever Yulius is going to do, if enough of me is left, I'll find some way, even if for one moment longer. I want to see you just for one moment longer, even if it's just to say goodbye. Leaning against the railing, I close my eyes and drift off, never realizing that I'd start to, started to cry again. With a start, I wake up to sunlight, streaming through the stained glass of the ballroom. What? What the heck? Desperately, I try to think back to the last thing I remember. I was at the pier, and I fell asleep. So why am I in the middle of the room here? I try to move, but quickly realize I'm bound by chains to a chair. Fear moves through my body in ways, but after a brief look around, I confirm that Julius is nowhere to be seen. I notice that the damage that was done to the ballroom seems to have been repaired in just days. Did Julius do something to mess with my perception of time? Could he even do something like that? Remembering the incident shows room, I wonder if fixers were the ones who did it. Even though I know it's futile, I try to pull my hands and feet out of my bindings. What's the point of even trying anyway when Julius will just hurt everyone else? Still, when I hear the sound of footsteps, my heart feels like it sinks into my stomach. Even though I can't turn around, I already know who it is. Julius soon comes into view. He's holding an old-looking, intricately carved box in one hand and some sort of jar in the other, though I can't see what's in it. He sets it on a gold leaf and glass table that's placed near where I'm sitting. 
Yulia stands in front of it so I can't get a better look at the items. He just stares at me, vaguely smiling about I don't know what. Stare back. Time seems to almost slow down under his gaze, but I refuse to let him see me snap. There are a million questions I could ask him, a million things I could yell and scream. I could cry and beg, but none of it seems like the appropriate answer. In the end, I know it's just going to be a waste. I stare back at Julius quietly instead. A number of emotions run through me. Fear, frustration, helplessness, and despair, most of all. I'm a mess, I know, but he may have won. He got me just like he wanted, but that doesn't mean I'll let this a-hole see me cry. Unable to control anything else about the situation, I make this one last vow. No matter what happens, I will not cry. Instead, I try to glare at Julius with as much anger and hatred as I can muster. Seeing my expression, Julius chuckles in amusement. He moves closer and leans down so that his face is right in front of mine. Hate me all you like, little butterfly. It won't change a thing. My face doesn't change, though, and Julius walks back to the table. With his back to me so that I can't see, he begins to take things out of the box he brought. My fear has come to a boiling point, and I really finally let go of the last remaining hope that I had. This is it. This is the end. Let come what may. I start to stare at the mural in the ceiling, and I am again reminded of Sho. I'll just focus on the thought of him from now until the end. But then Julius begins to speak, looking back over his shoulder. I'm going to enjoy this little game. I wonder if I can top my old mistress. I'm horrified when I think about precisely what he might mean. What do you mean? Are you talking about that empress you were given to? Julius stops what he's doing and turns completely around. Well, well, it seems the little butterfly was listening after all. So you want to know? Well, why not? It's been so long since I could talk to anyone about it. Yes, my own parents gave me to Empress Laurentia, and thanks us as thanks on behalf of Phoenix Kind. I was a pretty, decora pretty decoration for her. Owning an exquisite creature like me seemed to be proof of for her that her power was above all. When I grew older, I became even more beautiful, so the Empress took me as her lover. I was her favorite pet, tutored in the ways of the Imperial Court. As her most precious toy, I was taught all the things that the Empress's first lover should know. One day, as is apt to happen to so many, Laurentia was betrayed and murdered. A new Empress took her throne, and so I was passed on to Empress Mariana, a vile woman who enjoyed breaking her toys. Breaking? That's right. Mariana was extraordinarily twisted and decided to test for herself the notion that phoenixes could be reborn. Ugh, that is sick, sickening. That was her favorite pastime, trying different ways to torture and kill me. Ulysses' eyes became distant and I feel sick to my stomach. No wonder he's all messed up. I can't help feel some pity for this beautiful, twisted man who must have experienced horrors beyond my imagination. But the thought that he intended to prep, to, prep, to, to perpetrate them upon me to try and top what she'd done to him was quite sobering. I eventually killed her and escaped. That Yulia says this so casually only increases, increases my fear. It was around that time that other phoenixes started losing their ability to resurrect. Yulia laughs. There were plenty of deaths around that time. It was before those fools realized they could no longer treat life as something trivial. But I've talked about myself enough. It's time to get started. I have plans for the future. Plans to get those pompous golden morons to realize that they haven't been true phoenixes for many centuries. My kind aren't some corrupted trash to be treated as worthless, or some plague on the otherwise perfect phoenix society. Julius Fitch flinch, finishes his little tirade with such vitriol that I'm actually surprised. I can see that he really cares about this, but it doesn't matter what he's doing is right. When, but it matters, but it doesn't mean what he's doing is right. Yulia seems to have realized this his slip. He takes in a deep breath and carefully schools his expression. He takes a step back and takes something off the table. For the first time, I can see what's on it. My eyes are immediately drawn to the large glass jar that looks like it's filled with gold and black dust. My heart stops. I see you notice the urn. He slowly runs his finger around the edges of the lid. I can't speak. An unsettling feeling spreads through me. I'm sure you missed your dear, darling little phoenix. So I thought he could join us. What? What? The blood in my veins runs cold. I look back and forth from Julius to the urn. No, 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 no. Julius looks so pleased with himself. But I, I feel hot and cold at the same time like I'm going to vomit. Oh, you seem bothered. Maybe I should just toss these out. Or shall I use it to fertilize the garden? 
I'm shaking, but my panic is starting to turn into pure rage with every word. You're disgusting. Leave Show's remains alone, you a-hole. Haven't you done enough to him? Just let him rest in peace. I struggle against my bindings, wanting to wrap my hands around his throat. But the angrier I get, the happier Yulia seems. He takes an old-looking golden brooch that's set with diamonds and a large heart-shaped garnet and places it over my heart. This? This is called the Bleeding Heart. Almost at the same time as he says that, I feel a sharp pain. I gasp, not expecting it. I look down and see that the brooch seems to have attached itself to my skin. The garnet starts to faintly glow. This will be what collects your powers. When it's done, I'll take it off. If you're fortunate enough to survive the process, then you'll be free to do whatever you like. Julius then picks up an ancient-looking bronze dagger. The blade and cross guard are made from bronze, and the handle seems to be made from some sort of bone. The pommel has a garnet set into it, and the garnet is the, in the dagger is identical in color to the garnet in the brooch. They appear to make a pair. It took a while for Seven to find another one. These daggers are very rare nowadays. Ulysses' voice is clinical and detached as he examines the dagger. Then he roughly grabs my bound arms and places the dagger alongside the, the under part of my forearm. He casually drags the dagger along my arm, leaving behind a trail of blood. Ugh. I wince but gasp when the skin heals over. Oh, how curious. I didn't know it was going to do that. Drawing it again, Ulysses takes me by surprise with the dagger. This time he makes a much deeper cut. I gasp from the pain, but I refuse to cry out. Ulysses continues his attacks on different parts of my body, satisfying some strange, morbid curiosity. Oh, jeez. I grit my teeth as Ulysses continues with the dagger, keeping Sho's face in my mind the entire time. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice something changed about the jar. The ashes have turned from gold to black. I realize Ulysses has stopped for a moment and appears to be thinking. I wonder what would happen if I tried it on your eyes. Oh, jeez. I swallow hard, unable to hide the terror on my face. He slowly brings the dagger closer to my face, and complete panic takes me over. I am completely frozen as the bloody blade inches closer and closer to my eye. Oh, jeez. Last chapter, chapter 12, on Dark Wings. Suddenly, there's a sound of glass cracking and shattering. Oh, I like this music. I like this music. A blast of energy explodes from the urn and blasts Julius away from me. I like the sound effects. I like the sound effects. The force is so great that the chair I'm strapped, over, strapped to tips over. I fall to the side along with the chair, still slightly bound to it. The explosion combined with hitting my head on the ground makes my heart ring. My vision is blurry too, and the ringing in my ears is so loud it's all I can hear. I see, I see Julius coming closer to me and try to struggle to get up. Julius, but there's nothing I can do. I'm so confused as to what's happening, but I hate being a helpless in a, hate being a helpless position like this even more. As my vision starts to clear up and the ringing goes down, I see, I see someone I didn't expect to ever lay his eye on, eyes, eyes on again. Oh, whoa, Shoe, Shoe came back in. Wow, Doug, Doug, wow, Show. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. I love, 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 love all the orange. Oh my god, I love all the orange. This is so, so epic and so flattering. Good gosh, show. My only complaint is why in the heck, oh, show. Why the heck are you wearing an outfit that's hiding your abs? Seriously, man. What? What? Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Show is the one standing next to me. But it isn't quite the show I remember. Large fiery colored wings are folded on his back while he reminds me of and while he reminds me of Sho, he looks totally different. No, no, that's not Sho, it can't be. He kneels down and touches my shoulder gently. I look away. Get away from me! As much as I want it to be true, I know this is just another one of Julius' head games. It's really me, Harkora. I'm back. His voice is so quiet and gentle that it strikes a chord somewhere deep within me. Sho? Sho nods and works on getting my bindings undone by melting them. I can't stop staring at him. I'm too afraid to. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll be staring at him then, Harcora. I'll, I'll stare at him enough for both of us. I'm so scared that if I take my eyes off of him, I'll, I'll wake up from this dream. The bindings fall off and he helps me sit up. He takes the brooch that's attached to him and pulls it off quickly like ripping off a bandage. I wince for a moment and Sho crushes it with his bare hands. Goodness gracious. Well... 
if, if, if this is a trick, I mean, I'm dead anyway, so if this is a trick, I'm gonna hug him. And whatever. I start to throw my arms around Sho, but he looks different, feels so different. I'm a little nervous. Is it really him, the show that I knew? Something about this show seems somehow ethereal. Is it really okay to just touch him? Touch him, Arcora, touch him! Sorry for taking so long, Sho, but, but how? I reach out and lightly touch his face, trying to figure out if he's truly real. His skin feels soft and warm, though, and he doesn't disappear. He softly laughs. I'm a phoenix, remember? He puts his hand on top of mine before pulling me in for a hug. The feeling is so nostalgic that I naturally relax in his arms and hug him back. You told me that that phoenixes couldn't resurrect. You only said the same thing and I saw you die. You disintegrated in my arms. It was the stars that decided. They deemed me to be a true phoenix. But I'm so sorry I had to go through all of that. Feeling overwhelmed by his scent, his warmth, and how happy I am to see him, I nuzzle my head against his shoulder. Oh, peaches! I'm so happy. I missed you so much. I love you so much. Oh, well, well, we went right there. All right. I feel surprised go through Sho's body, and that's when I realize what I just said. I stiffen and feel my face heat up, but Sho just hugs me even tighter. I love you too. Yes, the power of love. The power of love brought him back. Sho. I don't have time to be happy about this, though. Over show shoulder, show, show shoulder, show shoulder, I see Julius get up from where he was flung against the wall. He pulls out the dagger that must have stabbed him when the explosion happened and put his hands to the, to the wound, wincing. I figured you'd be back, though you're quick for your first time. Far quicker than any of the others. Show and I pull away from each other to face Julius directly. This has so much parallelism, parallelisms to, to seduce me, it seems. What? The parallelisms to seduce me too, I mean. What? You knew he'd come back the whole time? <sighs> you B. Julius takes down his hand and I realize he must have cauterized it when I see that the wound is gone. The others? What are you talking about? Why yes, you've changed. Can't you tell? Yes, perhaps that quick resurrection was exactly why you physically changed so much already. I wonder, did you pay a high price for your timely resurrection? Well, no matter. You're one of us now. Black fire runs through your veins. Julius laughs cruelly. I hope you like being a pariah show. Being hated by all the true phoenixes. That self-righteous lot you see is nothing more than a taint to their otherwise perfect kind. Julius brushes the dust off his clothes and looks at us with a pensive expression. He then grabs a silver ring from his fing on his finger that has a red gem inlaid in it. With a flash, he transforms into his true form. It strikes terror into my heart. Suddenly, I want to protect Sho, to tell him to get out of here and run. I can't lose Sho again. I can't. I hold onto my gear crystal necklace and focus my energy into it. Yes! Harkura power, make up! But before I can do anything else, Yulia suddenly creates a powerful rush of wind with his wings. It happens so fast I don't have time to put up a barrier. Sho wraps himself around me, protecting me from the glass, and rocks hurling towards us with his wings. I can feel Sho tense up and the shards of glass hit him and I start to panic when I realize this is exactly what happened last time. No, 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 it can't happen again. I won't let it. The wind attack stops and Sho lets me go. We stare at Julius trying to calculate his next move. I wonder what shall I do with both of you? Julius looks at me with his red eyes at first carefully examining me, but then I can see a new emotion I've never seen before in his face. Panic. His eyes frantically move up and down as he stretches for something, then they dart across the floor. Are you looking for that little brooch of yours? Sho holds up what, hold, what seems to be a pile of dust in one palm, and there's a devilish grin I've never seen before on his face. Your plan has fallen apart. I'm not letting you get near her again. The look on, of shock in Yulis' eyes is slowly replaced by anger. He starts shaking his face, twists in his face. He starts shaking as his face twists and distorts with a myriad of emotions, pure hatred, rage, and loss. He summons black fire and starts throwing them at us again and again and again while he spits his words. You fool! You idiot! You've destroyed the last remaining brooch! You are the reason Dark Phoenixes will never receive the respect they deserve. You are the reason Dark Phoenixes will continue to be seen as a stain on society. You have destroyed our chance and your own as well, you fool! During Julius' tirade, Sho keeps me behind him, while he deflects fireballs left and right with nothing but his hands. They hit the windows and the ceiling. Anywhere they hit, they explode and spread along the walls. 
but they never seem to hurt Sho. I look at his back, starting to fully understand that he's no longer the show that I once knew. Yulis' anger seemed to rise with every explosion, along with the destruction of his ballroom. Ooh, wow. After a few minutes of this, Yulia stops throwing the fireballs, but is suddenly upon Shu, Sho with deadly sharp claws slashing. And for what? You ruin an entire race for what? You a useless doll? Sho manages to dodge almost all of his attacks as he moves backwards, but Yulius lunges forward and again, 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 until finally Sho tries to back up but runs into me. His soft wings fill my face and tickle my skin, oddly comforting amongst all the destruction. But the sensation serves to clear some of the terror from my mind. I know if I don't act now, Sho won't make it. I'll lose this feeling, and I won't go through that again. This time, I will protect you. The thought spurring me to action, I drop to my knees under Sho's wings and throw my hands out in desperation. A barrier springs forth between Julius and us. As Julius moves to attack again, his claws only slash my barrier. I stand up and feel the force of his rage and frustration as he rapidly claws it over and over. Harkura, you can leave this to me. Thanks, but now that I have you back, there's no way I'm going to lose you. On impulse, I lean in and it gives Sho a quick peck on the lips. Oh, well, okay. Yulia suddenly uses his wings to propel himself backward from the barrier. Within seconds, he summons an immense fireball, the same of the one he used to kill Sho. No! Will my shield hold this time? I move my body in front of Sho's, but he suddenly crouches down and then launches himself straight up. Oh my, Sho! I look up at him. He flaps his wings a few times to maintain all altitude as he hovers in place. Whoa! I have no idea what he's doing, but I frantically expand my barrier off to protect him too. But without me in front of him, he's an easier target. Julius throws a fireball without hesitation, and my entire body tenses up as it crashes onto my shield. But this time, it holds. Julius readies two more in both hands. Sho, what are you doing? Sho summons his own fire, but it's not the usual color. It's black. So it's true, he really is a dark phoenix now. Sho looks down at Julius and with an intense, somber expression that I've never seen before. The mature look would have looked out of place on him just a week, a week ago, but this is... This is not the Sho I once knew. I'm never leaving you again, Harkora, but I won't forgive Julius for hurting you. Before I have a chance to comprehend what he's planning, Sho throws his fireballs. They, but they sail past Julius. What is he... With a crash, they hit the pillar behind Julius. I watch in shock as part of the second floor collapses on top of Julius. Whoa, Sho! I let down my barrier when I see Julius isn't moving. Sho lands next to me, his expression grim. I look at him, unsure what to think. He's gotten so powerful and I never thought he'd hurt a fly, much less attack someone. But he did it to protect me. Sho tenses and I turn to see a light coming from under the rubble. This time I throw up my barrier before Sho even has a chance to move. Rocks hit the shield and bounce off in every direction. Julius, clearly enraged, runs towards us and attacks the barrier with his claws over and over again. His attacks are no longer precise or calculated. Anger completely clouds his judgment and I know he'll never stop. How do we stop him? How do we end this? Suddenly an idea comes to mind and I decide to take the initiative. Sho, I'll finish this. Trying something new, I let go of my barrier with my hands and hold it within my mind. I focus on Julius and use my two hands instead to imitate the motion of ripping something apart. Julius lets out a horrified yell as his wings are pulled off my magic. Oh, this is great. Oh, fantastic. Because I, up to this point, barriers are awesome. Don't get me wrong. Barriers and protection magic is amazing. But I feel like it's very tropey. It's very tropey for the girls to have the defensive magic, you know, the female, the female healer, the female shield barrier person, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but it seems like in many of these kinds of games, they give the females those powers and not, not as much offensive powers. They normally leave the fighting to the men. So I'm kind of glad that finally they're letting Harkura doing something that's more of offensive than defensive. Because I really would love to break those, those tropes and, and stereotypes in these kind of games as much as possible. He falls to his knees, clearly not expecting my attack. His wings burst into green flames and burn into ashes as I step forward and push one hand forward. Eulis is slammed into a pillar by an invisible force and I close my hand as if I were actually choking someone with it. Blood forms at the corners of his mouth and slowly drip down his alabaster skin, providing a striking contrast. Julius looks down at me with tired eyes as I approach him. It's over. 
I won't kill you only because I know it's pointless. You'll just keep coming back. If you truly want to make a better life for Dark Phoenixes, you need to find another way. Don't even think about coming after me or Shu or anyone else I care about ever again. Because I will beat you down again. And ripping off your wings? That will seem like nothing compared to my vengeance. Oh, snap! Finally, our Korra opens up the can. I've been waiting for her to open this entire time. Thank you, character development. I can see the defeat in Ulysses' eyes and I let go of both the power that was holding him and my shield. He tumbles to the ground like a marionette that's had its strings cut. I turn to Shows, who's simply staring at me in, ama in amazement because he's like, Whoa, that was wicked hot. <laughs> what my girlfriend just did is wicked hot. A teary-eyed triumphant smile forms on my lips. Show, I did it. It's over. We defeated him. The moment the words are out of my mouth, a wave of exhaustion comes over me. I almost fall to my knees, but Sho catches me just in time. The words suddenly change position and I realize that Sho has picked me up. He walks towards the door, carrying me in his arms. You did well, Harkora. Rest for now, and I'll take you home. I give Sho a tired smile. I could swear I catch a glimpse of Shinji and the guy standing at the door, but before I know it, I fall asleep in Sho's arms. <laughs>